Yes, sir. Very, very, very happy morning to all. I, I believe that your preparations are going very, very good in that one of the so much of formula chapter is the ratio analysis. We'll try to revise the entire ratios within 15 minutes. So the chapter ratio analysis classified into five categories. Number one, liquidity ratio. Number two, leverage ratio. Number three, profitability ratio. Number four, overall profitability ratio. And number five, staff ratio. So there are two leverage ratios are there. Capital structure ratio and the coverage ratio. So right, sir, we are entering into the first ratio called as liquidity ratio. What is the current ratio? Current asset divided by current liabilities. That means how much current assets we are having to meet the current liabilities is what the current ratio, right, sir? Sir, quick ratio, liquid ratio, acid test ratio. My dear lovable students, inside the current asset, two types of current assets are there. Hard current assets are there and soft current assets are there. Hard current assets means it, we will take time to realize the money. Soft current assets means it can be easily converted into money. So, out of the current asset, from the current asset, if you reduce inventory and if you reduce prepaid expenses, you will get the quick asset. So, how much quick asset I am having to meet the current liability is what the quick ratio. Even inside the quick asset, hard quick asset will be there and soft quick asset will be there. So, I just want to take only the cash item, the most liquid item, cash plus marketable securities divided by current liabilities. That means how much cash I am having, how much marketable securities I am having to meet the current liabilities is what the absolute cash ratio. Basic defense interval, my dear lovable students, sir, how much quick asset I am having? to meet the cash expenses per day. For example, if I am having 20,000 rupees of quick asset and per day I am spending 5,000 rupees, that means four days I can happily sleep. That means even if there is no cash inflow into the organization, four days my organization will work. Coming to the working capital man, which is current asset minus current liabilities. The difference between the current asset and the current liabilities is called as working capital. Can we move into the second set of ratios called as capital structure ratio and also the coverage ratio. Capital structure ratio deals with the liability side of the balance sheet. Sir, debt ratio. Debt divided by total fund. For example, 30 rupees is the debt. Out of total fund of 100, that means we can say that 30 percentage is the debt ratio. Sir, equity ratio, then balance 70 rupees will be what? Equity out of 100 rupees. That means out of my 100 rupees, 30 rupees is the debt and 70 rupees is the equity. So, debt equity ratio is equal to 30 divided by 70. Debt ratio, debt divided by total fund. Equity ratio, equity divided by total fund. Debt equity ratio, debt divided by equity. Capital gearing ratio, man. Sir, my source of finance, some sources are fixed income bearing. Like preference share capital, I have to pay the fixed preference dividend. And debt, I have to pay the fixed interest. Sir, divided by equity shareholders fund. That means if I am including preference share capital and debt into my capital structure, after paying limited return to the preference shareholders and debenture holders, the equity shareholders can enjoy more. So, how much is the gear? How much is the benefit the equity shareholders will be getting because of including the preference share capital and debt in the capital structure? So, fixed income bearing securities divided by equity shareholders fund is called as capital gearing ratio. Proprietary ratio, proprietor means owner man. Proprietary fund divided by total asset. For example, 80 rupees is a proprietary fund and 100 rupees is the total asset means 80 percentage of the total asset is from the owner's fund debt to total asset ratio anything divided by anything total debt divided by sir to total assets that means sir 70 rupees is the total debt and i am having total asset of 30 100 rupees means out of 100 rupees 70 rupees is what debt fixed asset to long term fund ratio fixed asset divided by long term fund which is nothing but my long term fund is 500 rupees man and i am having fixed asset of 1000 rupees means so 2 is to 1 that means 2 rupees if i am having fixed asset 1 rupee i am having debt that debt is a long term debt that's it with regard to the capital structure ratios there are four coverage ratios are there Coverage ratios in the sense means what is my capacity to repay the interest. For example, debt service coverage ratio. My dear lovable students, if you are having sir, debt in your capital structure, you have to serve the debt. In order to serve the debt, don't take EBIT because earnings before interest and tax will be available for the interest that is debt holders, government, preference shareholders and equity shareholders. So don't take EBIT. Take earnings available for debt service divided by 
interest plus installment divided by 1 minus 3. Generally, interest is a post-tax or pre-tax item, pre-tax item. Installment is a post-tax item. So, I am converting the post-tax item into pre-tax item. That's why divided by 1 minus 3. Interest coverage ratio, we all know that from EBIT, we have to pay the interest. We will be getting the earnings before tax. From that, we have to pay the tax. You will be getting the PAT. From the PAT, you have to pay the preference dividend. You will be getting the Sidbury earnings. That means from where you will pay the interest from EBIT. That's why EBIT divided by interest is the interest coverage ratio. From where you will pay the preference dividend, sir, PAT. That's why PAT divided by preference dividend will give the preference dividend coverage ratio. Coming to fixed charges coverage ratio. Fixed charges coverage ratio means we know that sales minus variable cost contribution minus fixed fixed cost is what EBIT. Inside this fixed cost, depreciation will be there. Depreciation is a non-cash item. My dear lovable students, take the EBIT plus depreciation. You will get the cash flow from operating activity divided by, sir, interest. Interest is a pre-tax item. Installment is a post-tax item. Convert the post-tax into pre-tax divided by 1 minus T. That means interest plus installment divided by 1 minus T. Sir, you will be getting, sir, cash flow from the financing activity. So, cash flow from operating activity divided by cash flow from financing activity, you will get the fixed charges coverage ratio. That's it with regard to the second area of the quick revision, man. Shall we come to the profitability ratio, man? Profitability ratio, as we all know that GP ratio, GP ratio is equal to GP divided by by sales into 100. For example, 30 rupees is the GP and 100 rupees is the sale. I can say that on sale, 30 percentage is my GP. Sir, the, the pair of GP is the cost of goods sold. For example, out of 100 rupees, 30 rupees is the GP, 70 rupees will be the cost of goods sold. My dear lovable students, sir, 70 divided by 100, that means upon sale, 70 percentage is my cost of goods sold. Right, man, coming to the net profit ratio. Sir, gross profit divided by sales in 100 is the GP ratio. Net profit divided by sales in 100 is the net profit ratio. But, sir, always we will be expressing net profit ratio with the tax and without tax. If it is before tax, man, sir, net profit before tax divided by sales into 100. Net profit after tax divided by sales into 100. This is like, sir, checking the sugar. That is before food, after food. Net profit only will be having tax consequences. Gross profit will not have the tax consequences. Can I proceed, sir? Financial expenses ratio, nothing, man, financial expenses divided by sales into 100. Financial expense means how much interest you are paying, how much discount you are incurring what is the flotation cost you are spending all this will form part of financial expenses operating profit ratio operating profit divided by sales into 100 otherwise called as ebit divided by sales into 100 can i proceed sir my dear lovable students sir so tell me the income formula and the cost formula gp ratio gp divided by sales into 100 what is the alternate cost formula cost of goods sold divided by sales into 100 net profit or financial expense ratio net profit divided by sales into 100 financial expenses divided by sales into 100 operating profit ratio or operating ratio sir operating profit otherwise called as ebit divided by sales into 100 or operating cost divided by sales into 100 sir what is the profit volume ratio costing we know contribution divided by sales into 100 sales minus variable cost only contribution so variable cost divided by sales into 100 that's it with regard to that family also can i move into the overall profitability ratio we are having return on investment return on equity return on asset return on investment basically return on investment is equal to return divided by investment my dear lovable students that return means if it is pre-tax ebit investment means capital employed which is equity plus debt that's it sir if it is post tax that is after paying tax man which is profit after tax plus interest divided by debt plus equity that's what sir profit after tax profit after tax will be the earnings available to the equity shareholders plus interest my dear lovable students divided by debt plus equity the same way return on equity return on equity means return divided by equity what return will go to the equity shareholders earnings before tax if it is pre-tax what return will go to the equity shareholders profit after tax if it is post-tax divided by equity will be the formula i hope that you are very comfortable return on asset is equal to return divided by asset again pre-tax and post-tax what is a pre-tax sir ebit what is a post-tax pat divided by average total assets instead of taking the closing total asset take the opening total asset plus closing total asset divided by two you will be getting the average total asset fantastic to the core sir we know that sales minus variable cost, contribution minus fixed cost, EBIT. From EBIT, we are supposed to pay interest. We will be getting EBT. We will be paying tax. 
we will be getting the pat from the pat we have to pay the preference dividend the balance is called as residual earnings this residual earnings will go to the equity shareholders so residual earnings divided by number of equity shares you will get the eps from this eps company will be distributing the dividend so total dividend company has been distributed divided by total number of equity shares you will be getting the dividend per share that means if 10 rupees is the eps and at 6 rupees is the DPS, I can say that 6 divided by 10 into 100, 60 percentage is the dividend payout ratio, which is nothing but DPS divided by EPS into 100, right, sir? Sir, dividend yield, yield means return. Nothing, my dear lovable students, you are going to get a return of dividend. In order to enjoy this return, you have to invest, sir, MPS. That's why DPS divided by MPS, which is nothing but return on investment, is equal to return divided by investment. Return is DPS and investment is what? MPS. Earnings yield, my dear lovable students. Earnings yield means the return is earnings. So return divided by in investment. In order to get the return of EPS, you are supposed to invest MPS. That's it with regard to that formulas. Come on man, based upon market. Price earning ratio. Price earning ratio is equal to price divided by earnings. What price man? Market price. Earnings mean what man? EPS. Sir, book value per share, which is nothing but total net worth. What is net worth man? Assets minus liabilities is equal to net worth. Divided by number of equity shares, you will get the book value per share. Market value to book value, nothing. Something to something, A to B, A by B. So market value divided by book value is the formula. That's it. We are moving into the last leg of discussion called as tap ratio. Sir, raw material turnover ratio. Sir, raw material turnover ratio is equal to turnover divided by raw material. Any turnover ratio, turnover divided by that particular item. We will not sell the raw material. We will consume the raw material. That's why raw material consumed divided by average stock of raw material. That's it. My dear lovable students, WIP turnover ratio. What is the formula? Turnover divided by WIP. Sir, I will not sell the WIP. I will not consume the WIP. I will produce the WIP. Where you will produce? In factory. That's why turnover will be substituted by factory cost divided by average stock of WIP. Sir, finished goods turnover ratio, man. Sir, finished goods turnover ratio is equal to turnover divided by finished goods. My dear lovable students, turnover includes profit. Eliminate the profit. That's why cost of goods sold divided by average stock of finished goods. Data's turnover ratio is equal to turnover divided by data's. Sir, sales, there are two types of sales. Cash sales are there and credit sales are there. In turnover, don't take the total turnover. Take only the credit sales divided by average accounts receivable. Credit-ass turnover ratio is equal to turnover divided by credit-ass. My dear, from creditors, I'm going to purchases. What purchases? Credit purchases. So turnover will be substituted by credit purchases divided by average accounts payable. Working capital turnover ratio means turnover divided by working capital, which is nothing but sales divided by net working capital, which is nothing but current asset minus current liability. Fixer asset turnover ratio is equal to turnover divided by fixer asset, turnover divided by net fixer asset. Capital turnover ratio is equal to turnover divided by capital employed, turnover divided by capital employed. That's it with regard to the discussion of the ratio and this can be further expressed in raw material holding period you can say that 12 months divided by raw material turnover ratio because totally 12 months are there if the raw material turnover ratio is four times you got 12 divided by four comes to three months that means sir every time when you purchase you will hold the raw material for three months if you want in weeks 52 divided by raw material turnover ratio if you want in days 365 divided by raw material turnover ratio sir if you want to find out the raw material consumed per day total raw material consumed in a year divided by 365 days or 360 days given in the question the same can be represented for WIP WIP holding period sir if you want to express in months 12 months divided by WAP turnover ratio. In weeks, 52 weeks divided by WAP turnover ratio. In days, 365 divided by WAP turnover ratio. And if you want to, so WAP consumed per day, factory cost divided by number of working days in a year. Pakka. Inventory turnover ratio means, inventory turnover ratio is nothing but, if you want the inventory velocity in months, 12 months divided by inventory turnover ratio. In weeks, you say, 52 weeks divided by inventory turnover ratio. In days, 365 divided by inventory turnover ratio. Sir, if you want the collection period, sir, data's collection period, that is data's velocity in months, 12 months divided by data's turnover ratio. In weeks, 52 divided by data's turnover ratio. In days, 365 divided by data's turnover ratio. And average debt period, that is creditor's payment period. Sir, 12 months divided by creditor's turnover ratio. In weeks, 52 divided by creditor's turnover ratio. 365 divided by 
credit as turnover ratio. That's it, my dear lovable students. A quick review, quick revision of the ratio analysis. I just want to uh, recap or sir, just give you some insights into that. Those who have studied the ratio analysis, this 15 minutes recap, I believe that will be very, very useful for you. If yes, just inform by way of comments, man. In the September, Matunda will meet at the appropriate time as CA final student. Thank you. Bye-bye from me.